What is up everyone? A little bit of a different background this time. I We are situated, well somewhat situated in our new home, slowly getting boxes unpacked. But today's topic is super prevalent within the bodybuilding space. It is going to be on metformin and berberine. Berberine, the thing that no one talks about anymore because everyone's talking about metformin. But I am going to jump into basically one versus the other, why they're very similar, why there might be a little bit of differences based off of actual studies and clinical data that we have. Now, I want to preface that metformin in particular is a drug that is one of the most well-studied drugs in the entire world. Uh, off the top of my head, I believe it's been around for 60 to 70 years of research that we have on it. So we not only have short-term research and micro research, we have macro research on a very large scale at this point in the benefits of this drug. And honestly, this is one of the, I'm gonna call in parentheses, put a miracle drug. But there are some catches to this drug that no one really talks about anymore because they only talk about the benefits, which there are definitely a lot more pros to cons on this drug, especially after seeing long-term research, they started seeing things that they were not expecting. This drug was originally intended for to help with type two diabetes. Uh, this is not help with a type one diabetic because type one diabetes, you need insulin. This is for someone that is usually going to be someone obese or not following a diet well, or the pancreas isn't functioning well and they become a type two diabetic and we have seen so many positive benefits from this drug in particular that is being very popularized within the bodybuilding space. There was a point in time, and I believe this was about 15 to 20 years ago or so, that they thought that metformin could be an amazing tool in bodybuilding for muscle building. Well, that turned out to not be the case. Um, so that's something that is not really talked about anymore. We are using it more for the reduction of oxidative stress on the body over time. So when you're looking to build a program for yourself and really to reduce the extra stress load on your body, especially when performance enhancement comes to the equation, this is where this drug is being popularized nowadays, which I am very happy that it is. But again, berberine is not really getting talked about. So I want to talk about metformin, the benefits of it. So similarities between metformin and berberine the pros, the cons to both of them. And you might find this a little bit interesting and you will see that I'm a little bit biased towards one rather than the other. And one of the reasons is probably because only one is really being, getting talked about right now rather than the other one. Um, so let's kind of jump into this thing and let's start from the ground up. So metformin is a drug which directly affects hepatic release so we're talking about liver release of glucose from the liver into the body. And these people that are having issues with glycogen uptake, so converting that glucose into glycogen, having issues to uptake. So this drug is intended to help with glucose to glycogen uptake. There's a lot of other things that come into the equation and there are also some, you'll note that I will say that they do not know all the mechanisms of this drug 100% to a T, but they know at a very high level what this drug is doing in certain pieces where they're not sure. So that major piece is going to be your liver. So it increases AMPK. AMPK is an amazing enzyme that helps us to uptake glucose into glycogen. This is the major benefit, the number one factor of this drug that is going to be directly impacted. On top of this, where this gets a little bit more complex is it actually affects the gut as well. And a lot of people that take this drug, the number one side effect that you're going to hear that's going to scare people away from this drug is diarrhea. Trust me, I have had clients time and time again that have a diarrhea from this drug but I will resort to other things before going to a metformin in particular. But the GI distress that you get is not always a bad thing. In fact, 
the GI distress that you get from this is usually good. It readjusts the microbiome to a degree, but it affects GLUT2, which and also inhibits glucose uptake through the intestines, but it also helps with the glycogen uptake. So it does kind of two things at the same time in the intestines. They're actually not 100% sure the entire reasoning of what happens within that gut chamber. What we do know though, is that it does help to dump glucose out of your GI tract. That is one of the mechanisms that we do know. So that diarrhea and the re, re the changing of that microbiome, that is a very important and a very positive benefit to this drug. So that diarrhea that you have in the beginning, and not everyone gets it, usually people that have, and from my, my personal experience with, uh, relative experience with clients, as well as myself, is if you're having a higher blood glucose reading, then you have more chances that you're going to have more gut distress that comes along with it that may be due to the inflammatory markers that you're currently having. And when you start mo mobilizing this glucose and reducing the overall glucose in the body and the reduction happens, you might be having some more stuff pass through because your GI system is working better. It might be that you have some extra bacteria in there, bad bacteria in there, and it's going to be flushing it out of your system. That could also be from the extra glucose in the system. So it is a positive thing that it is changing your gut. Now, usually in relative experience, this will last between one to two weeks for most people. When your glucose levels start to drop back down, you tend to see it reducing down. Now, that is another piece to it. Now, one thing that is still a little bit unknown is the gut to brain access way and how this drug works. So we we're talking about the excretion of the extra glucose in the system from through your intestines out of your body, obviously. So when we're talking about that gut brain access way, when the brain is getting signaled that we are now uptaking more glucose to glycogen, so we don't need as much in the body, the brain is basically signaling to get the extra glucose out of our system. They believe that that is one of the major reasons and causes for the dumping of the glucose out of the system, out of the intestines, so that you don't re-uptake that. Like, like I said before, that is, they believe that is via GLUT2. It does not, is not affecting GLUT, it does not affect GLUT1, but it does affect GLUT2. Now, one other piece that they have seen a positive correlation on, and this is more of a meta-analysis study that they did, was the benefits on HDL. So who would have thought? Cholesterol levels, right? So your HDL levels improve, and they're inversely related HDL, which is good cholesterol and LDL. So if your HDL goes up, usually your LDL will drop in this at the same time. Another thing that kind of comes up in studies that we see a correlation with is your triglyceride levels should improve as well. So when we're talking about obese people, these are usually things that are not in a good position. So they obviously prescribe this drug in particular to more of diabetic, diabetic patients and type two diabetes which means that you have above a 120 blood glucose score. Pre-diabetic ranges are 100 to 120. Diabetic ranges, type two diabetic ranges are 120 and up. If you're in that range and they can't get you down with dieting, most people that have this usually have an issue with dieting or chronic stress markers can also flare this up and inflate those markers. So, we have also seen a positive benefit for potential heart, right? And cholesterol, heart, plaque, stuff like that. Now, what are the downsides of this drug? So the things that people are not talking about really is the potential reduction in IDF1 score, also the reduction in mTOR path. So IGF-1, great for building muscle, right? Like we want IGF-1. Now note, growth hormone is great anti-aging. IGF-1 is not great at anti-aging. Um, IGF-1 is great for building muscle tissue and regenerating tissues, but growth hormone is going to be that anti, um, that longevity one. I do have a video breaking down growth hormone to IGF-1 and the response in the body. Metformin in studies has shown to reduce IGF-1 score. Now, that is a study done in older males. A lot of these studies are done in older males. They haven't studied, they have studied 
younger populace as well, but it's not as much studied as older males. Why? Because our pancreases usually don't aren't as resilient over time. Most of our organs are not as resilient over time. So we tend to have form insulin resistance, therefore we're type two diabetics now, we get prescribed metformin, and then they have a lot of research on that populace in general. So I do just wanna specify that IGF-1, it was a study done in older males. We don't have studies done in younger males looking at the IGF-1 score, but there was that correlation that it did reduce IGF-1 score. Now the other piece of this is the reduction in mTOR. Now this is a mechanism that does occur from metformin. This is proven. mTOR is a pathway that is a anabolic pathway to help with muscle protein synthesis and protein synthesis in general. For instance, when we are taking steroids, we want to increase, increase mTOR pathways. One of the things, increasing protein synthesis, right? All right, so you kind of get where I'm going with this now. But I want to preface, if you are taking exogenous hormones, then you will still get a benefit there. You're probably not gonna get enough reduction in mTOR from metformin to even make a difference or any at all. So that's kind of where the rubber hits the pavements. But note, if you're a natural athlete, something that you do need to take in mind and take into account is when you're taking metformin, that it does reduce mTOR down. You may not see this immediately. There might be a certain threshold in dosing where you don't have a reduction in muscle growth or muscle protein synthesis or any of that stuff. But once you break that threshold, it's kind of where the rubber hits the pavements. Maybe you need to back it back down. So that is just something that you do need to take into account when you're talking about metformin. It is basically more of an anti-androgen is how you should think about it. We have seen it time and time again in studies where it does do this. So if you're natural, something to note. Now I know I've said some things that might scare people off from taking the drug, but with the reduction of mTOR and IGF-1 and it potentially not being the best choice for muscle building. But what I can say is there are also studies in older males showing that it has increased muscle building during that time. And I would assume that is due to the fact that they were insulin resistant and now they have more glycogen in the system and they're training harder, they have more glycogen stored in the muscles. So that is potentially where they're seeing some of that muscle growth coming in play. So just note that that is kind of like the misnomenclatures between like looking at one stu micro studies, like one study versus another study versus another study. Macro studies are kind of the tried and true ways to look at studies. And this is over a long period of time. This drug has been very well studied. So we like to look at the whole picture of things and not just little bits and pieces of it. So I've talked a lot about metformin. I think it was important to kind of get that one out of the way. There are other benefactors that come into the equation, but those were the major ones in the high level view overviewing metformin. So let's go into berberine. Berberine and metformin are almost impossible to delineate the difference between them. They are very, very similar to each other. It is going to be affecting the liver in the same exact way that metformin is. It's going to improve your AMK. So you're going to be converting glucose uptake or glucose uptake into glycogen. So glycogen uptake. And on top of it, it does have antimicrobial properties. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So when we're talking about the gut and antimicrobial benefits between metformin and berberine. Berberine is king here. I think that people rate metformin as being the king just because that's the one more talked about right now, but there are more benefits to antimicrobial properties in berberine than metformin. So that is one other benefit that I would rate berberine as a better product as far as using it for antimicrobial. So, that being said, antimicrobial, if it's needed for like things like SIBO case and stuff like that, berberine is definitely something that would come into the equation. Another thing, in a study, one animal study, they've also shown it to improve testosterone levels in those animals. So contradicting to metformin, where we see the opposite, where it's basically anti-androgen, we do not see the anti-androgen properties in berberine. So it can actually benefit potentially in muscle growth with berberine. So those are the two really big differences between metformin. Now keep in mind, that's a one-off study. 
it hasn't been really replicated or restudied again as far as that muscle building and the testosterone benefits behind berberine. But what we do know about both of these, and I'm going to let you choose which one's better than the other. To be honest, I think they both have their own perks. They both have their own benefits. And ultimately at the end of the day, I'm just giving you facts based off of studies and what has been done over the years that these things have been studied. I hope that they do more studies on metformin as well as berberine. I think they're fascinating and phenomenal tools to implement. When you're talking about longevity, both of the drugs are, drugs are amazing. Well, berberine is not a drug, it is herbal. But they're both amazing in the sense that they are anti-inflammatory. And the two biggest things for longevity is caloric restriction, and anti-inflammatories anti or anti-inflammation within the body. Now let's do a little bit of like cliff notes really fast on some questions that I've been asked. Uh, timing of day to take these and dosing and can you combine them together? So dosing is actually interestingly enough very similar to each other where I, if I am relatively giving someone berberine or metformin, I think one gram in a day is a good starting point for anyone. Start low, then go up from there. So I would recommend 500 milligrams of either or in the morning and 500 milligrams either or at night with the meals of the day. Do you have to eat it with the meals in the day? Absolutely not. But due to the fact that it is going to be metabolized in the liver and the liver is the main mechanic behind both of these, I would highly recommend pairing it with food and that's ultimately my choice there. Now, the other question is how high can you go? Usually about two grams is about the threshold that you go to. So we started like, my recommendation was a thousand milligrams. I would hit 1500 milligrams and maximum around two grams. Is there a reason to pair these two together? Super interesting question and it's would ultimately be on the case and what we're seeing in lab work. I personally think that if you need like some anti-androgen measures, then you'd probably go with a metformin. And if you have some berberine in there, I don't think it's gonna to make too much of a difference, but I don't, wouldn't recommend doing two grams of berberine and two grams of metformin, no way. I would say two grams across the board of both is fine, but I do like to stick with like one or the other or throttling. So kind of figure out what works for you. I personally think that I love the antimicrobial benefits behind berberine. Berberine is what I personally stick to. I have been on berberine for, I wanna say four to five years now. Uh, and like I said, this one in particular is not being popularized. Metformin is definitely being pushed a lot harder than berberine. And I do see in cases where berberine isn't cutting it, I would switch over to a metformin to try it out. But ultimately at the end of the day, it's one of those things where maybe a combination of the two is going to be more beneficial, like where that rubber hitting the pavement kind of thing is coming into play with the metformin. Maybe you're using metformin in a smaller dose and you can utilize berberine and not hit that, hit that pavement as hard, you know? Um, those are kind of some things that you would have to play around with. Everyone is super bio-individual. No person is alike. Everyone's blood work is different. Every time you run blood work, it's different. And on top of it, the body goes through cycles. So figure out what works for you Hope you found this video helpful. See y'all soon.